After we have installed your uh, Alpaca on your local system, we will need to test it if everything actually works as planned. So the next thing will be to running the Alpaca test suite on your system. This will not test uh, your installation just yet, but uh, it will check if Alpaca is uh, in general working on your system. So what you need to do for running the test suite is uh, to reconfigure your build directory with the build testing flag enabled. You also need to run uh, to enable the CMake build type release option. As you will notice, there are a lot of releases here in the command lines. This is uh, to ensure portability across systems. So on Unix systems, you will require the CMake build type, whereas you will require the uh, config release flag and the next step on Windows and uh, also for Xcode. So after you reconfigured your build directory, you want to build the test suite. CMake comes with a built-in build command, and uh, this will actually take quite a while because we had a, have a lot of test cases. So you may want to adjust the number of parallel compilation jobs to a number of CPU cores and available memory. But be advised, this requires around 2.5 gigabytes of free memory per parallel job. So you please, please check beforehand if you have enough memory available for the number of jobs you want to launch. You don't want to run into the out of memory killer. If everything works so far and uh, the test suite compiled successfully, you can now run the test suite. Uh, this is the ctest command, which also comes bundled with CMake. So you can just run ctest, ctest with a release flag and uh, the test cases should uh, execute successfully. If you run into any problems with the test cases, please report them to us because this indicates an error in Alpaca and we'd be happy to know about it. There are also some Alpaca examples available. Uh, if you go to the top level source directory, you will see the example directory. And if you want to, you can build them all at once from your build directory. You just have to enable the Alpaca build examples flag for this process. We will also upload additional examples over the course of the next few lessons to our GitHub group. So uh, we will also uh, talk about them in, more, uh, in detail the next days. So uh, you should have a lot of different examples to look at at the end of the week. For now, we will use the uh, vector add example from the default Apaka source directory. To access this example, you uh, first switch back to the top level source directory of Apaka and then switch into the example slash vector add directory. Again, create a local build directory and switch to it. And uh, now we need to advertise your actual Apaka installation. So in this step, we won't use the Apaka source tree for testing, but your uh, local Apaka installation that we just installed in the last lesson. If you install Apaka to a standard location, which means that you didn't specify a special CMake install prefix, all you need to do is run CMake and the CMake build type. And if you install Apaka to a non-standard location, you can pass the Apaka root flag to CMake with the path that you uh, just specified in the previous step. If you don't want to use the Apaka root flag, you can also set the environment variable CMake prefix path. On Linux, this is done via the export command. And on Windows, this is done via the set command. If configuration was successful, you can now build the example, again with the CMake build command and the uh, correct config. And uh, once the build is completed, you should see the executable somewhere in your build tree. On Linux and Mac OS, this will be on the same, uh, directly in the build directory. So uh, the ex executable will be called vector add and should be visible by just typing in ls. On Windows systems, the executable will probably be in the release subdirectory of build. So you need to switch to this directory first. In the next step, you can then just execute the vector at executable and the expected output uh, always is execution results correct. 
If you get any different kind of output, please report them to us because we'd be happy to learn about that and probably fix another error in Alpaca. Okay, that's it for testing. Are there any questions regarding this workflow? Yes. So I'm just wondering, obviously Alpaca has many different targets. So during this testing workflow, is it actually going to look at the hardware on the system and just enable the appropriate um, targets? Uh, by default, Alpaca finds out which uh, hardware is available on the local system and which platforms. So if you have CUDA installed, Alpaca will find it by itself and activate the uh, backend and the corresponding test cases. So by default, Alpaca will just enable all available backends on your system and also test them. However, if you don't want that, you can also disable them manually. Okay, fine. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, related to this, sorry, I, I don't have the raise function, raise hand because I'm recording. Um, if you have if you have several CUDA installations, um, can you can you tell uh, Alpaca where to go? Yeah, I think this is a general CMake flag because uh, if you have several CUDA installations, probably none of them are in the default directory. So you uh, just have to tell CMake anyway where to find your CUDA.